This is lesson 4.1, similar polygons. So lesson 4.1, similar polygons. Unit 4 um, is all about similar things. Unit 3 was about congruent shapes. Unit 4 is about similar shapes. Today is the second. Boy, I need to change that date, huh? We are <coughs> off. It is no longer the 20th, and we only have 15 days of school left. Whew. Okay. Polygons with the same shape. but different size. So if I look at these two triangles, they're the same shape, but they're different sizes. When your polygons are similar, the corresponding angles are congruent. Corresponding angles, and I'm going to abbreviate with the angle symbol and an S. Corresponding angles are congruent. So all the angles are actually the same. So that hasn't changed. The thing that's different is that corresponding sides, corresponding sides, are proportional. Do you guys remember learning about proportions back in algebra? A proportion is a fraction equal to a fraction. That's called a proportion. The ratio of corresponding sides is called the scale factor. <laughs> And we're going to abbreviate with SF because we're going to use the scale factor a lot. So we're going to be setting up proportions all day long. You're going to set a proportion in your dreams because you're going to be doing it so much. Okay? So when in doubt, you need to set up proportions. And so when you ask me, Miriam, can you help me do this problem? And I walk over and you don't have proportions set up, I'm going to walk away. I'm not going to help you until you have proportions set up because... If you set up proportions when we're doing this, you should have zero trouble figuring out the answer. Okay, so proportions are the key when we're talking about similar things. So if polygons are similar, their perimeters all the way around the outside are also similar and proportional. Perimeters. Okay, so what is the scale factor? What does that really mean? What is the scale factor of triangle ABC to triangle DEF? So it's asking me to figure out the scale factor between triangle ABC and triangle DEF. So one of the ways that we can find the scale factor is just to take two sides that match up. Do you guys remember we did AB matches up with what? DE, right? So AB is going to match up with DE. So we're going to write that as a fraction, AB over DE. And we're writing it uh, with AB on top because that's the triangle they gave me first. So look in your diagram. How long is AB? Eight. And how long is DE? Twelve. These are called corresponding sides. They match up together. Now, if we reduce 8 over 12, if we divide both of those by 4, I get 2 thirds. So the scale factor of ABC to DEF is 2 thirds. This would be your scale factor. So if I asked you for the scale factor from DEF to ABC, well, let's try a different two. Let's do EF and match that with BC. <laughs> So let's write EF on top, because that's what they gave me first, over BC. 
Well, EF is 15. BC is 10. If we divide both of those by 5, I get 3 over 2. So the scale factor when I go the opposite way is 3 over 2. Do you guys see that? That these are this kind of the same, uh, except they're flipped. The reason is because triangle DEF, this one over here is bigger, right? And so the bigger number should be going with that triangle because it's bigger. So the scale factor is 3 to 2 if you're going to go that way. It says, what is the ratio of the perimeter of triangle DEF? Well, we learned up top that they should be the same. So let's try this. Let's put triangle DEF on top. Triangle ABC on the bottom. What is the perimeter of triangle DEF? Use your calculator if you need to. The perimeter of triangle DEF. Anyone? 54. Okay. So the perimeter of DEF is 54. And what's the perimeter of ABC? 36. Now if we reduce this, let's see, we can reduce them both by 6, so that gives me... 9 over 6, we can reduce that again by 3, which gives me 3 over 2. And so the perimeter is proportional. The ratio of the perimeter is 3 to 2. And what do you notice? It's the same as the scale factor. Okay, so the perimeter is also proportional just as the sides are proportional. That will always happen in these, okay? Okay. So then we're going to write similarity statements. Just like we wrote congruency statements, we're going to write similarity statements. The symbol for similar is this, just the squiggly without the congruency sign. So just the squiggly here without your equal sign. That means similar. That means they're not exactly the same. That means they're proportional. Okay. So a valid similarity statement and must match corresponding ang angles and sides. Write a similarity statement for the triangles above. Okay, so if I said triangle ABC and we said triangle ABC is similar to triangle what? Triangle ABC is similar to triangle what? DEF. They match up. Angles are still congruent, <coughs> but the sides are proportional. So in example one here, it says list all the congruent angles and write a proportion that relates to the corresponding sides. We're only going to do one of these because uh, it's exactly what we did in congruency statements, except that the sides are proportional. So I'm confident that you guys can match things up correctly. So we're not going to look at our diagram because we're, it may lead us astray. Instead, we're going to look at our similarity statement. So we know that J goes with what? P. So I know that angle J is congruent to angle P. The angles are still the same, and then let's mark that in our diagram. J and P go together. Then angle K matches up with angle what? M. M. You guys are quiet today. K matches up with M. M. Julia, angle L is going to match up with what? Angle N. So angle L is congruent to angle N. So we'll put three arcs there. Now we're going to talk about our sides, but our, our sides are proportional. They're not equal. And so we're going to start with the smaller triangle. We're going to put JK first. So JK is proportional to which side, Braxton? 
JK matches up with what? PM, okay? They're proportional, so we're setting up a ratio, okay? They're not equal to each other, they're proportional to each other. So make sure you write your proportion correctly. All right, and then if I said KL is proportional to which side, Lexi? Um, MN. Okay. And then side JL is proportional to what, Kara? PN. This right here, setting up your proportional sides, is going to be what we're going to do all day today. They're going to ask you to find lengths of sides. They're going to ask you to find out the missing value for x. And if you set up your proportions just like this, you're going to be just fine. All right? So let's go ahead and skip example three. I'm sorry. Yeah, two and three. And let's look at example four. Example four says, if the figures are similar with a scale factor of two to three, find the value of x. All right, so we know that our scale factor is two to three. So we're going to go ahead and set up two to three. We know that's our scale factor is two to three. Now, they gave me two on top, which is the smaller of the two numbers. So between 42 and x, which one do you think is smaller? Looking at your picture, which one looks smaller? 42, so that's going to go on top with the 2 because it looks like it's smaller. 42 over x. How do you solve a proportion? Who remembers from algebra how to solve a proportion? What are you doing there? What does that mean? Cross multiply. Do you guys remember doing that? Cross multiply. 2 times x, which is just 2x, equals 3 times 42. What is 3 times 42? Okay, so then I have 2x equals 126. Let's go ahead and solve that. I hear 63, is that correct? Okay, so we know that 2 thirds is what as a decimal? What is 2 thirds as a decimal? 42 over 63. No, no, no. Two thirds as a decimal is point three or point six 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 six, right? Yeah. Okay. So theoretically, if I were to put forty two over sixty three, I should also get point six 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 six. Try that. What is forty two divided by sixty three in your calculator? Yeah. Same thing, right? So we're getting the same scale factor here. Okay. So x is sixty three is going to be my answer. Why don't you try number five? It says they are, have a similar scale factor of six to five. That means six is going to go on top. Is this is what you guys are getting? 168 divided by 5? Yeah. Okay, because 6 is the bigger one and x is bigger than 28. So x needs to go on top with a bigger number. And so we get x to be, what are you guys getting? 53.6? 33.6. So let's decide if that's uh, true. 33.6, is that the same decimal over 28? What is 33.6 divided by 28? 1.2? Is that what you said? Okay, what happens when we do 6 divided by 5? Is that also 1.2? Yep. 6 divided by 5 is also 1.2. So they're coming out to be the same thing. 
Okay? So it's okay to get a decimal answer here. Okay? So did you set, we set them equal to each other, not on top of each other. So 5x equals 168. Solve that for x and you get 33.6. Okay, let's look at number 6. Now we're not sure uh, how to set this up, but we do have a similarity statement, right? And so in our similarity statement, before I even begin working the problem, before you begin working the problem, we're going to set up our proportions. A, B over D, E. Then the next two are B, C over EF. Then lastly, I have AC over DF. Because again, setting up proportions leaves no room for error or little room for error. Does everyone see where I got these proportions from? You okay getting these proportions? So AB, the first two matches up with the first two. Okay, now go ahead and fill in what you know. So we know what's 25. AB, and that's the top one over here. Oops. So I can put 25 is my AB over DE, which is X. And I know that BC is 20. And EF is 28. I don't know AC and DF, so I'm just going to put AC and DF, and then it doesn't really matter about those. I don't have to have all three to do the work. I just have to have two of them. You understand where these came from now? First two over the first two. Second two over the second two. First and last over the first and last. Yeah. Now I'm just filling in with the number, so I know that AB is 25. So, but it's just like AB, DF, they're just kind of... I'm trying to figure out where, where these came from. Yeah. AB is the first two, goes with the first two, DE. BC is the second two, goes with the second two, EF. <coughs> and then the first and last AC goes with the first and last DF. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, and then we're cross multiplying and solving. What is 25 times 28? 700. Twenty-five times twenty-eight is seven hundred. What is seven hundred divided by twenty? Thirty-five. So x is thirty-five. Any questions about that? What's really confusing about it? Okay. If you try to go with what the diagram says, you are going to be confused, which is why we don't look at our diagram. We only look at the similarity statement. Okay, so on number seven, there are four sides, so that means you're going to have four proportions or four ratios. Okay, so let's do number seven. Let's set that up correctly. PQ is the first two, so that goes with WX. So PQ over WX. Again, if you do not write the similarity statement, you will lose points. If you do not write this sim or this statement, these proportions, you will lose points. What is the this, I'm sorry, the proportions, these things right here. These proportions. If you don't write the proportions, um. you will lose points. Okay, the next two letters are QR. QR goes with XY. Or y, x, same thing. Then the next two are what? R, s, and that goes with y, z. And then the last one is always going to be the first and the last letter. So p, s goes with w, z. So I'm just going P, these first two, then these two, then these two. So Wait. PQ, these two, yep, and these. then these two, QR, and then RS, those two. 
and then the first and the last. Go down here. Nope, the next group. So what goes RS is the last two. So what goes with RS? The Y and Z. Yep. And then your last one is always P and S. Okay, keep going. So I have Solve this for X. Yes, because there are four sides. So what goes over the P and S? P is your first and the last, so what's going to be the first and the last here? W There you go. Are you okay with these part? That part? Setting this up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so do we know PQ? We don't know PQ. And we don't know WX, right? So we're just going to kind of skip that one. Do we know... We don't have any values for PQ. I don't know what PQ is, and I don't know what WX is, so I don't need them. QR, I don't know, and XY, I also don't know. So I'm going to hope that RS is X, YZ is 32. You okay with the part? Good. And then PS is 75. WZ is 40. All right, now we can cross multiply. Go ahead and fill in with what you know, please. Fill this in with what you know over here. I don't know anything. But yes, you do. You know that PS is 75, so wherever PS is, you can put a 75. Ben, what's 75 times 32? Hang on. Ben's answering for me. 2,400. What is that divided by 40, Ben? 60? Anybody else get 60? Okay. X is 60. X is 60. Any questions about this? Okay, go ahead and set up your proportions for number eight. Now they're going to give us a little bit more information. Let's go ahead and set up our proportions for eight. Again, setting up your proportions is going to make life a lot easier on yourself. You're not even looking at your diagram. You're only looking at your similarity statement. The first and the last. The first and the last. Where are you getting an R from? That's a K. What's a K? So you have XK. The second two. Okay. I'm told. I have 32 over <coughs> x plus 3. And then gm is 36 <coughs> over x plus 6. Raise your hand if you've set up your proportion correctly. Not if you found x, but you set your proportion up correctly. Good. Don't forget, when you, when you cross multiply, you're going to have to distribute. So this is 32 times x plus 6 equals 36 times x plus 3. And then you're going to have to distribute to both the x and the constant. Ben and Taisha, if you're both finished, check to see if you guys have the same answer, please. <coughs> Is that what Lexi got? Yeah. Good. What about Elvis? What's 6 times 32, someone? You need to do 32. Look, did you see what I have on my screen? Where? Right here. 
32 times x plus 6, mm -hmm. which is this. Okay. You don't have a plus sign there. And it needs to equal, not go on top of, but equal, right? When we cross multiply, we set them equal to each other, not on top of each other. So that so needs, to needs to equal 32x, or whatever you did. And then what do you do? How do you solve that? So, that space there. Okay. All right, all right, I got it. Okay. Okay, if you're done with number eight and you think you have the right answer, go on and do number nine, please. Should be one oh eight. Ah. Did you get twenty one? Okay, go on to number nine. Write your similarity statement first, or your proportions first. Yes, it does. Yep. Okay, go ahead and set up number nine. Okay, now that we have our proportions set up, let's go ahead and plug in for x. If you're working on the video, go ahead and push pause and find out what x is. We're getting x to be what? X should be 9. If you're not finished with that, go ahead and put x is 9 and you can come back and finish it in a minute, okay? I want to talk to you about the first problem on your homework. Um, so let's flip <coughs> over that page. Again, if you look at your diagram only, you're going to mess up. So don't look at your diagram until you have already set it up. So I'd like you to go ahead and set up this uh, proportion. Go ahead and set up these proportions. Fill in with what you know and then pause before you start cross multiplying. Set up your proportions. Fill in with what you know and then pause before you start multiplying, please. If you're watching the video, go ahead and pause and set up your proportions. Okay, why is this one different? Because we have X and Y, and we have all three of them, right? So here's what I need you to know. Always start... Always start your proportion, or match up your proportion, with the, the ratio that you know for sure. So the one we know for sure up here is the 40 over 16, right? So I'm going to match 40 over 16 when I do my first cross multiply with these two. Because that's the one they gave us. It's the one they gave us the information about. Now, pause please and look up at the board. Even though I can find x, okay, and then I can match these two up, what happens if you find x incorrectly? What's going to happen to y? It's also going to be incorrect. Right? And so even though you find x, still use 40 over 16 with the 40 over 5 over y. You'll use this one with both proportions to find x and y because 40 over 16, you can't mess up because they gave you those numbers. Okay? So 40 over 16 can be used with both of them because they all have the same scale factor. All right? Then when you get down to number 4, let's look at number 4 real quick, please. I just want to show you something on number four. Do you notice that we have two triangles on number four? They're kind of built inside each other. You guys see that? And so when they're built inside each other, it's really important that you make sure to write your proportions correctly, not on what your diagram says, but 
what, on what your uh, similarity statements say. And then you have this big triangle here. So how much is from A to B? 28. It's not just 20. It's not just 8. <coughs> it's 28. And I would make that drawing on your paper so that when you go to start plugging things in, you don't just put in just D to B, which is only 8. But you put in that entire side, which is 28. Okay? That's my hint for your homework. So you may go ahead and begin and do this page, 1 through 5.